three hello traders it's Samurai Trader here welcome to this members Q&A session as we get underway as always I do need to bring up the risk disclaimer uh, as members of course you see our disclaimer on every video if you haven't read the disclaimer for some time please ensure that you pause the video and you read the disclaimer so the first question from one of our members and let me just quickly see who it was and I think it was Fred yes so Fred Owens is what time of day would you advise is the best to trade I'm looking at trading futures and I know it's virtually at 24 7 trading well actually nearly 24 5 <laughs> but I typically work uh, 8 to 6 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time and I'm looking for a good time in the evenings or early mornings to find some trading windows well there's some great sessions uh, during the globex session and so once the market closes I call the market well there's really three sessions we have the New York session which then rolls over into the Asian session which then rolls into the London session now my two rules are in trading the globex market which is the after hours market is volume and a trending market they're sort of the really critical factors we want to make sure that we've got volume that is a market that uh, when we go to enter our trade that we're not getting too much slippage or there's gaps between price which you'll see on some of the low volume markets so there's sort of a considerations that you really need to look at so we look at uh, CL can be a really good market during the globex session particularly as we head into London so before you head off to work for London sessions well and truly underway so CL is great and during the uh, Asian session we get a few trades and just remember uh, with all of these markets you're going to drop your try your time frame that you're trading down now remembering in the my program there is a PDF that has recommended or suggested time frames so basically you're looking uh, at a time frame of about 25% of the New York session so say for an example we may be trading a 550 tick on the ES during New York well during the New York session that is during the Asian session you might trade a 144 tick I'm really liking the Renko uh, on the Renko during the Asian session I really like the 0.5 which is a two tick brick so that's uh, works really well during the Asian session so you've got CL as a good market get a few trades you'll get more on the ES YM you get a few uh, trades you can trade either the Renko of course or you might look at a 55 tick uh, on the YM gold there are some good opportunities on gold now remember with gold generally speaking you need to have a larger uh, trading account the NQ uh, the four tick Renko works really well on the NQ uh, the EC which is a currency futures particularly as you head into the London session it can be a little quiet along with the other currency futures during the uh, globe session but once you head into London the volume starts to pick up and of course then you got the Forex markets now your specific question was about futures so they're sort of the markets you might consider and I'm sorry if you just heard that siren go off that was just uh, a setup alert so Forex markets for our Forex traders uh, once again as you head towards London that's when the markets going to really pick up so you need to really drop down the time frame now I just want to quickly show you this let me just pause this video so what we're looking at traders here is the ES so we're looking at the ES uh, 0.5 Renko and so basically you've got these are $25 bricks and we can see here the open that means the Globex open from this morning so since that time uh, this is uh, so what time is it now it's now 5 31 p.m. Australian time so it's been open a good five eight hours now so not a lot of action but there's been some um, damn good trades uh, here this was a we ended up here with a divergence here by the way uh, nice forget that one when the market opens you miss you're not going to get on that one that would have been a nice winner for your nice trend trade uh, if you had have jumped on this one you had a lot of angulation stopped on that one 
uh, nice little winner little scalp they've only had a nice little divergence trade now just remember traders uh, you're going to usually bounce off for gold so just remember with your divergence trades and of course until you're consistently profitable traders stay with the trend trades right so you had there uh, a nice bounce another bounce you had there uh, an entry entry little divergence trade and as we head into the session there you then had a t10 right here as well and we've rallied up to the 200 and up to the floor pivot but not that I really wanted to cover too much of that now let me just show you the NQ let me uh, just bring that up where's the NQ gone now I've got some additional indicators on here you would not normally have on so excuse the messy chart but I wanted to show you here was the open that moved very quickly so here's your first trade here's your second your third your fourth you may have been stopped on that trade if your stop was only one tick above it would have been stopped here but then you formed a little double top here for your next entry moving along here you then had your next entry another 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 uh, then you're getting some nice divergence now remember traders your divergence trade you had your first true divergence you remember we're expecting a bounce off the gold now we had it here's our second uh, divergence trade uh, then we had a t9 and also known there as a t20 we can see very clearly you had a t20 there another entry you might have taken that 89b but remembering we can see here that our 34 had changed direction so here is your entry there you had another entry and another entry and that's about it of here we had a, another one there remember we are following the gold and of course don't forget we're referring to our anchor chart at the same time so we can see very very clearly that our anchor chart is confirming the trend direction as well now uh, so I was jumping around a little here but you can see there that was the NQ for tick and my apologies I should really put that perhaps back up there again for you so that was a four tick or a one point range on the Renko so plenty of really good trades and so you can see there t2 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 entry t2 so lots of different types of trade entries so hopefully uh, Fred that uh, covers your question there now the next uh, question that I had here was from Gavin now my apologies no it wasn't Gavin this one is from John uh, John Houston okay John this is in reference to avoiding chop so what I started to do and I've already got a number of videos there in the q or in the there's many q a sessions where I've sort of spoken about chop but I've decided to do a very comprehensive video so what I started to do was type up the key points here and I'm now up to uh, page two of the key points so what I'm going to do is uh, tomorrow I'm recording part one and there will be part two uh, on trading in and around chop and how to avoid chop and one of the best opportunities is of course is trading straight after chop I want you to reframe the, uh, the feelings that you have or the thought patterns that we have around chop chop is actually good when you've got a market consolidation or we go into a choppy market that can actually be a, be a fantastic signal that we're heading towards a what a breakout so there's actually a great opportunity where traditionally we head into chop um, uh, and even myself I'll be chopped up one or two trades because at times you're not sure you don't know you're heading into a consolidating market but what we can then do is prepare for a great breakout so what I'm going to be covering in this videos is no trend no trade we'll be talking about that the chop warning five to six candles waiting for the sweet spot uh, bull and bear flags aware of the pivots using the ADX and of course respecting the time of day there's a ton of points so as I started to go through every point of that I've decided to uh, do two videos so the first one will be out tomorrow now as always traders you want to go and oh, let me just 
remind you where I put the new recordings now there is a tab on my Google Drive so I know a lot of new members are watching this video don't forget to watch all of the new videos or sorry all of the recordings and videos in the welcome email I know there's about 15 of them but I cover this comprehensively so remember to go to the tab new recordings so I upload new recordings every week so you'll find all the new recordings any new books anything really new I upload there each week now uh, another when why I'm on here another question was brought up here and I think it was uh, it was actually by Charles and so while I'm here Charles I was going to pull this up I might as well quickly show you Charles's question was with over 300 videos now in the program which are the best ones to focus on well once again in all of the welcome videos uh, or all the videos in the welcome email that I send you so you get two emails when you first join you get the password then I usually send you a, a personal email with about 10 15 videos on there uh, where to start where to go and uh, uh, Q&A sessions etc so start with those but the and, and one of the questions was that you had with going back a number of years ago with some of my videos where some of the indicators I may not use if you look at the strategy powerpoints the strategy powerpoints the key strategies here have all of the indicators that I use okay uh, and I use right up to today so look at the strategy powerpoints and also under the cheat sheet so cheat sheets and strategy powerpoints now another thing I want to show you here is with the videos now I in the welcome email now I now send you a spreadsheet of all of my recordings I want you to go to the John Shearley tab and under the John Shearley tab I'd like you to not only watch the videos that I send you the links that are in my welcome email but also the new membership chart set up and strategy series one through to four now I want you to watch those and strategies strategies and concepts uh, from one through to ten these are really gonna truly fast track you remember to be patient also and remember you're going to have what we call aha experiences and I know I talk about this all the time unfortunately some traders uh, invest in the day traders fast track program in my program and they expect to be making a fortune within two or three days and to understand all of the setups within two or three days traders this is a profession remember to join the 5% club we've got to be doing things that other traders don't do I want you to become the best of the best but what it means is you're gonna to have to roll up your sleeves remember the only place in the world where success comes before work is in the dictionary so please remember that and by the way Charles that wasn't aimed at you but unfortunately some traders they just you know think it happens overnight remember we're trading in some of the biggest and the best traders in the world we can make money and you can make an enormous amount of money the barriers are low to get into our profession but what it means is you need to be smart so please invest the time in uh, watching these videos so as a reminder on this spreadsheet look at the tabs below you've got the master there there's a couple of hundred videos here you then got the strategy videos there's uh, 30 videos there on specific strategies uh, that I teach you etc so go through the tab of that ah this is the uh, the other area uh, all the latest uh, setups and the um, indicators that I use here under the 2 by 90 minute webinars they are the ones that I run and that are recorded so if you want all the latest indicators I use there please look at that now let's now go back to the PowerPoint uh, so remember to go to the new recordings uh, area and you'll find that now there's also one other thing when I think of new recordings that I didn't mention on my Google Drive which is very very important is the Renko charts we're getting some incredible feedback from members where I'm talking about trading Renko and tips and ideas on trading Renko traders are uh, um, it's the success stories I'm getting from members are just spectacular so please uh, take the time in watching those because if we look at this here um, and if we look at 
what have I got here we can start this is the uh, sorry this is a CL this is the black gold and you can just see how smooth these charts are uh, compared to tick and of course it's very very similar to, to range charts but they're even better from range charts and so I talk about in my latest uh, videos on Renko the reason I'm now using Renko so extensively myself etc one thing I couldn't get on TradeStation was the tails which is the price highs and lows which for my form of trading are really important now this now brings me into now we're on to this into an email here from Simon page in reference to trend line breaks etc on Renko so we can see here the fractal points which are our little black dots you can see here a fractal points uh, still work really well with Renko so for using fractal trend line breaks now so there were really three questions that Simon had was uh, micro trend lines fractal breaks and fractal trend lines so let me just show you very quickly uh, Simon the three questions you've got there and cover those so first of all and let me just get that here make sure we've got that is that gonna play up on me uh, here we go okay so our first fractal trend uh, a fractal break is this so we can see here we've come up we then had a number of candles for fractal plots the break point then is over here so here is if you're using a fractal break there it is there now remember fractal trading is made famous was made famous by Bill Williams from profitunity and it is a great way of trading I believe though we'll get our and I know we get our entries a lot earlier by of course taking our 34 bounce here getting our bounce here 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 etc so Bill's strategy is of course is to have a sell order in there when take out these lows which does work extremely well but there's another way Simon and you can do it which of course you're alluding to wanting me to cover and that is we take that point to this point as many of you are aware back in 2007 through to 2009 we did a huge amount of work on trading the Forex market with fractal trend lines and in many ways it covers and and Tom DeMarc talks a lot about this in new in I'm just trying to think of Tom DeMarc's book name it just slips uh, uh, that's it new science of technical analysis now DeMarc talks about the correct way of drawing trend lines and if you study his work it really comes down to in my opinion fractal points so here's a fractal point with a black dot here you've got one here so we simply draw a line from there to there I'll get a close under that there is my entry point so I want an for a short signal or a short trade I'm looking for an uptrending trend line there is my entry right there sooner than this fractal point now over here I don't have a secondary entry okay you can see I don't have a fractal point so I can't um, put my trend line in here but I do have a 34b now the next point as we travel down with our fractal points is this we can see we've got one here so we'd simply draw a trend line from there to there but then we get another point here so I take it from my furthest point I now draw it to here to here it then the market then rises I don't get a close under it but then I get another fractal point here finally is my close below the trend line that is my fractal point now remembering for a short trade we want to have a rising trend line for a long trade we want to have a trend line that is falling so let's just take this point that point there to this point here if we extend this through here is our trend line break now this is where your personal discretion comes in when you see you've got this distance you can see that you've got a lot of price action and quite often particularly being this is a counter trend trade and we know we're very cautious generally of a bounce off the gold that 
this is where I would be looking for the second candle or using a rule of two so hopefully that sort of explains that and there is or there are videos there on trading fractal breaks in the program so just refer to those but getting back to your third question was about micro trend line breaks what exactly is a micro trend line a micro trend line is where you get this sort of uh, trend line with a trade generally trading with the trend it's where you get three touches or you get one two then finally your break price action rises comes down forms if you like a little higher low rises then falls through again let me try to find another one for you um, look you could even say this is an extended micro trend line okay here's it comes up you've got a touch there you've got another one finally it breaks through I like the micro trend lines where you've really just got and and by the way uh, just got two points and by the way with Renko because it smooths the Renko charts move, uh, smooth price action out so much of course you lose a lot of the micro trend lines but you actually have one here now this has actually got a number of touch points on the way through and finally you get your break so you could have drawn a trend line there to there uh, sorry there to there still no break under you had a new fractal point and finally you get your your break there as a micro trend line now of course up here we had a 200b comes down here we had a, another 200b uh, there of course then we had and one thing we are missing off this chart let me just put it back on there is we're missing our trigger line okay so there we had a t20 t20 is so you got a potential trade there you got another t20 you had a t20 entry there so once again there's tons of uh, here is a another t20 so you got a ton of different uh, trading opportunities there let's not forget your t25 trades so Simon once again long-winded but uh, hopefully we've given you some or I've given you some ideas there so another question here from uh, Charles just getting back to Charles for a moment just about the most recent videos was the spikes on trading Forex during the London session you've tried the 233 tick but it sends it seems to spike a lot you get a lot of reversals uh, with Forex I absolutely love range charts or Renko let's have a look at this now what we're looking at here is and let me just get my pointer right back here this is actually the Aussie dollar we're looking at this is the AUD USD on the three pip Renko so each one of these bricks is three pips in size and so it's even better than a tick chart so I would uh, either be using a three or four tick range chart or Renko chart and uh, most of you know how I feel about Renko so the particularly with the new Renko so if you look at your Renko chart just look how smooth they are now once again I'm referring over to my anchor so we can see here that I had a nice t25 nice uh, little pullback here for a short trade looking over then at my anchor chart here I'm using an anchor chart there of five now generally uh, as a reminder traders with Renko I'll usually double the time frame so if I'm using a three pip brick I like a six pip now here I've got five and there was a specific reason I put five up and it just uh, I can't remember but try a five and try a six but remember the purpose of the anchor chart is to help you spot divergence on the higher time frame and to confirm the trend direction but just look how smooth this is uh, for an entry here at uh, this is 9 30 a.m. my time uh, we had a nice uh, 34b also a t25 now just look how clear cut here our nice double bottom with divergence is in place here and of course as most of us know this is what we call a bet the farm trade we've got a bounce a beautiful double bottom off our 200 we then go back up here and what have we got we've got a great t7 again 
with divergence on the way up remember we're following the gold our trigger line is above the gold so we're looking for bounces so we've got a long trade you had a secondary long trade you've got another long trade here remember the further you move away from your EMAs we're forming what we call angulation now can you see that little wedge formation that is what we call classic angulation the further you move away from your major EMAs remember you're heading towards more likely to have a pullback or a retracement here you've got some slight divergence so you may have decided to jump in and take this trade but just remember when you take these you time and time again you'll stall up the high here and form a double top remember double tops and double bottoms uh, are tied in very very closely with trend reversals so please jot that down and remembering and hopefully as members you know this every time you watch one of my videos please have pen and paper out so here double tops and double bottoms are strong reversals of or strong signals of a possible reversal so here you may not have taken this and you can see here at a beautiful double bottom here and a beautiful double top get getting back to uh, your question Charles here uh, the five minute chart uh, I really like the Renko or the range now on the spreadsheets that you've got there if you look here under uh, where is it here uh, under Forex on the tabs there and because I've minimized this so you can see it there is a tab there that says Forex let me just try to get along here where is that let me just show you here okay so Forex so you will find a number of videos there uh, that cover Forex trading where I talk about this and also you'll find it under the general videos uh, for a number of Forex videos there as well so I prefer range over tick charts on Forex and even better still Renko now remember with some trading platforms like MT4 you may need to purchase a plugin uh, for plotting Renko charts on MT4 and remembering we're after the Renko charts which show the tails which shows us the true highs and lows and of course I talk about this in my videos on Renko which you'll find in the Renko folder and just one last thing I want to cover Gavin uh, Gavin this is in reference uh, to being chopped up which of course I'm recording a video there on choppy markets the big thing is is to really make sure and you can see in all my videos the last year or so I really really push having an anchor chart and referring to the anchor chart uh, that is if there is no trend on the anchor chart if you don't have and if we just look over here we can see here look at this look at my anchor chart here what direction so my anchor chart is almost twice the front time frame now remember as a quick reminder if we're trading tick where uh, or tick or volume charts or even time based charts I want an anchor chart th three times higher range I'm after an anchor chart that's 1.7 times higher so just remember those formulas and there's lots of videos on that so only ever trade when you've got a fanning of the EMAs and when the anchor chart confirms if you don't have those don't take for trade now remember in the recording I'm going to be doing on um, trading around shop I'm going to be talking a lot about this because very very important always remember we want a fanning of the EMAs now when you've got a fanning of the EMAs that represents what we call the sweet spot now during various times you'll get us of the day during quiet times you might get a breakout get a fanning then it falls away and we're going to be talking about that on the video as well because we're going to have certain times today where we need to be very very cautious uh, and anyway I'll leave that for that video now last of all uh, you also brought it up uh, Gavin was in reference to the trading platforms that you use traders there is a PDF and let me pull this up in my program on my preferred trading platforms one moment 
okay here it is I just found it so it's um, uh, it's called which is the right trading platform for you now it's only a nine minute if I remember correctly it's something I filmed back in uh, uh, 2016 just on the various trading platforms now most of you are aware that I use the TradeStation platform now one of the disadvantages with TradeStation is you've got to open your account with a minimum of five thousand uh, dollars you can effectively lease the platform but it's not inexpensive either it's um, I think if you just lease it that is you don't open a trading account but you just want to use the TradeStation platform it is uh, I think about 200 a month plus your data fees now one way of looking at it is it's a cost of doing business remember trading is a business and you must have the right tools it's just so critical that you've got the right trading platform so um, just remember that when you go with a broker's platform um, such as Onanda um, uh, or the MT4 which is free you don't get all the functionality that you may choose to have long term so when you're looking at going professional uh, just remember it pays you to invest in an outstanding platform such as Ninja Trader trade station of course we've got hundreds of think or swim uh, traders that are uh, trading professionally using think or swim but probably the most popular platform today is ninja trader hands down particularly uh, in ninja trader 7 many have gone to nt8 and of course we've got a lot of indicators for ninja trader of course when you become a member uh, you um, get all the main indicators for trade station now uh, and just very quickly there's only two indicators here this two smooth indicator which is from trend pro and the floor pivots you see me use they're a third-party indicator but I've done a deal where members can go to trend pro and get them for hundred and ninety seven dollars for just those two so if you're a member go to Roy I don't get a cent out of those um, when you go and buy the floor pivot over too smooth you see now you can get a lot of these of course uh, nearly every trading platform has floor pivots free of charge but I like the way her Roy's plot and also most of you know I love the too smooth however if you are starting off on a budget just use the standard stochastic and you've got all the settings in the cheat sheets and the PowerPoints nearly every trading platform has floor pivots so you don't have to go there but Gavin getting back to what you were saying here uh, just consider as you advance going to maybe ninja trader uh, or trade station now I should just also mention just when I mentioned trade station when you're looking at, at Forex trade station is no longer a Forex broker they got out of that um, I think it was early 2017 it might have even been late 2016 you can still plot as you can see here the data uh, for Forex and you can then trade using the dome uh, or the Dom whatever you want to call it on your broker so say if you've got a uh, an account with forex.com or wherever you can execute on their platform and use TradeStation uh, for your charting now the data on Forex with virtually every platform that I know is free but when it comes to futures data you're going to pay a fee for that and that's where you need to really uh, look at that and it can run up I think my data fees uh, are around a hundred dollars a month something like that of course there is and once you get my platform free is uh, I don't pay any fees on the platform because once you execute 20 plus trades per month the trade station platforms free you only pay for the data so traders uh, will wrap this Q&A up remember to be on the lookout uh, over the next few days in the new recordings folder for the two recordings on trading choppy market so there's a, a lot going to be a lot of information got a very extensive video uh, sorry uh, powerpoint i've already prepared so thank you traders you'll hear me on the next video